Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you need IT consulting, you can go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and someone will be with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. That's our promise to you. If this is your first time here, go down and click subscribe. Click that little bell notification icon as well so you'll be notified when new videos do come out. I want to thank everybody for being here. Whether you're new or returning, I do appreciate each and every one of you. What we're talking about tonight is a question that I get a lot. Uh, a couple years back, I talked about how I preferred OpenSense um, versus PFSense, and I got a lot of questions, and so I thought, well, maybe it's time because I still prefer OpenSense over PFSense. Now, I do run them both, and I do have clients that run them both, and I do support them both, but... One of the major differences for me, as you'll see, is the web UI and kind of the intuitiveness of the system of OpenSense. But first, I've got this nifty spreadsheet that I put together, and I got this information from both of their websites, uh, from the PFSense website and from the OpenSense website. So let's take a look at the features, and I'm just hitting some kind of high notes here, and you'll see that both of the systems today kind of they kind of fill the same void so let's take a look at this so 2fa for the user interface both pfsense and opensense support that and i'm going to go down these issues and or down these uh, features and we'll kind of see where they're parallel we'll talk about where we diverge kind of at the end and then um we'll actually go around and go and poke around in and you can kind of judge for yourself so, they both support 2FA for Captive Portal, for OpenVPN, IPsec VPN, and Web Proxy. They do both have Captive Portals. They support site-to-site -site IPsec VPNs, site-to-site uh, -site OpenVPN, PPTP Client, IPsec Client, OpenVPN Client. You should not be running PPTP Client, but it is still listed, and apparently maybe there's some legacy systems that need that so we'll keep that on the list they both support high availability in the hardware uh, you know if you have uh, you can run two appliances in high availability mode they can both be caching proxy caching proxies they both do intrusion detection and prevention and can do that in a transparent mode kind of in line and i just deployed one of those so uh, look for that video here pretty soon uh, they both do dynamic DNS. You can back up to the cloud, back up locally. They both have stateful firewalls. Both support VLANs. Both projects have really nice, constantly updated um, documentation, and that is super, super important, especially for open source projects to have documentation. Sometimes you'll get a really powerful piece of open source software, but the documentation sucks. Not the case with either of these uh, either of these projects. They both have dashboards. You can do capture, cap, pack, packet capture. Uh, they both support NetFlow. You can do firewall rules based on fully qualified domain names. That's super powerful right there. Both have traffic shaper, SSL fingerprinting, quality of service, web filter. Uh, they do both have updates, but that's going to be one of the differences that you're going to see here. Um, they both support port forwarding, one-to-one -one NAT, outbound NAT, hairpin NAT, IGMP proxy, universal plug-and-play, DNS fil filtering via open DNS, um, and you can do DNS filtering with more than just open DNS. You can do it with any DNS um, filtering company that you want to use and put the firewall rules in place. They both do multi-WAN load balancing, failover, and aliases. Uh, they can both be NTP servers. They both support SNMTP. They have full diagnostics. You can get awesome community support. You can get paid commercial support. Now, here's where some of the differences start coming in, and this is originally why I started using OpenSense. So we talk about modern modern web UIs. And if you remember when PFSense was kind of forked from MonoWall, the firewall itself is super powerful, so I can't knock that, but 
the web UI left something to be desired, especially if you were used to using mono wall. Mono wall was awesome. In fact, I think just for nostalgia's sake, I need to find mono wall, download it, that and IP cop and, and IP fire and a couple of those older ones. IP fire and IP cop, I think are still updated. I don't run either of those anymore. I just took my last IP fire box out of production less than a year ago. Um, but if you saw Monowall and the original PF Sense, you'd be like, what? Who did this, right? So you're going to see, so OpenSense, to me, the interface has always been cleaner than PF Sense. And I think that might have been one of the things where they, they kind of diverged. Um, and then as far as quick updates, OpenSense actually has a pretty steady stream of quick updates, quick patches and things like that. And uh, PFSense doesn't put those updates out as fast as OpenSense. Now, you can look at that as a good thing or a bad thing. I look at it as a good thing as long as the updates aren't breaking the system. And so far, I haven't uh, had any complaints about those updates breaking the system or making it unusable. So the other thing is OpenSense... Um, has taken some of the modules and I was actually talking to the developer and some of the modules or the, the subsystems um, that had issues in the past, logging, captive portal, traffic shaper, limiter, um, web proxy, IDS, IPS, they actually rewrote those subsystems from scratch for OpenSense. OpenSense. So those are different than uh, PFSense. So... He also told me the plugin framework has a better rewrite and offers better extensibility without having to deal with core modifications. So I am not so much on that side of it. Uh, I don't do any development really um, for the system. I just take what they've given us and use it, right? So, um, and the other thing that I'm not sure about with PFSense, but I know for sure with OpenSense is that the, the two-factor authentication will work with a remote radius server so that's kind of the highlights you can go look this up i'll leave a link to this spreadsheet if i don't know how much good it'll do but i'll leave a link to the spreadsheet down below now here we are we're going to put uh pf sense and open sense side by side so what i've done is these are vanilla systems they're installed in vms and we're logging into the lan interfaces default passwords and everything so just looking at the system, here's the dashboard for PFSense, and here is the dashboard for OpenSense. I'm a, a, I, I don't know what's hardwired in me for what, but I like those menus on the left-hand side instead of those drop-down menus. And I will tell you that the reason you know that I originally started using OpenSense is because the system looked it looked, it was, to me, it was more, it was better organized and it was easier to use. So what I don't do is I don't sell a system uh, unless you want it. You specifically request it where you have to keep calling me for support every time, right? I'm going to package solutions together for you so that if you want to manage this on your own, it's easy, it's intuitive, it takes very little training. We can get you up and rolling, take the training wheels off and you're set. I didn't feel like I could do that with PFSense. The menuing system, if we look over here on OpenSense, it's very nice and clean. And even though they have changed this uh, on PFSense, we still just have these menus up here. And I just, I don't feel good about the menus. And it's just something about taking this and put it in front of a customer. Um, it can be very daunting. Whereas you have this nice, clean layout and Kudos to OpenSense. Yes, let's be realistic. Something as small as the way the menus look to an end user who's not someone technical uh, can make a world of difference in the way that they use a product. So, you know, when I have more technical people and they want, you know, PF Sense, not a big deal because that person's technical. They're going to get in the weeds. They're going to get in there. They're going to learn it. You know, if somebody wants to manage their network, OpenSense is going to do everything everything PFSense is going to do, but me, it, it, in my opinion, it's got a fancier bow on it. It looks better. It's more intuitive as you're walking around or as you're navigating the, uh, the menu structure. So right under system, 
you can see we've got all this advanced. We've got, and then, so advanced admin access, NAT firewall, networking, uh, miscellaneous, system, tuna, system tunables, notifications. So if we go down to system here, we kind of get that exact same thing, but it's presented in a different, it's presented in a different way. I don't get this. I get this nice menu over here. I can click on access, that menu. So they've they've put a lot of thought in how to, it's, it's basically the same menu really if you look at it, but it's presented to the user in a different way. And user manager, we'll do users. So user manager and then users. I'm, I, was, I just clicked users. So here it's called, you know, I gotta go to user manager. As in here, it's just users. Little things like that, they compound and they, they add up. You might think it's silly, but I've seen it in practice over a lot of years. Um, that something as simple as the UI for someone that I'm going to hand this off to and they're going to manage it, it makes, makes a world of difference. Uh, what else can we go to? Let's see. We'll go to interfaces. Let's take a look at interfaces and assignments. So here is the interfaces and assignments. Here is our interfaces here. We can go to an overview of the interfaces here. We have our LAN and our WAN. And the UI is, is just, it's more appealing. You're going to hear me say that over and over and over again. Here's our assignments. So you can see interface assignments to get to the same place. This is the PF Sense screen. This is the Open Sense screen. And we could go through the whole thing, but do yourself a favor. If you want to see the difference, just download OpenSense, download PFSense, throw it in a VM, and uh, play around with it. So I've got some PFSense and OpenSense videos coming, and we're actually going to put a VPN between the two and, and all that good stuff to show you how. I mean, it really is, once you understand um, the systems, and how they how they work, how they want to be configured to make things work properly. It's just like you can, you know, you saw the videos where we took a PF Sense box and we, you know, made a VPN to an edge router. Well, we could do that to a MicroTik. We could do that to a Sonic Wall. We could do that to a WatchGuard, to a Palo Alto. And, you know, we're going to do it to an OpenSense box. So those are the kinds of videos we got coming. We're going to delve into some of this stuff, especially the two-factor authentication is definitely something in 2020 that if you haven't done it yet, you should be thinking about. So, you know, let me know what you think about the interfaces. You know, try to keep the comments positive, but let me know what you think about the interfaces down below. I'm a huge fan of the OpenSense interface, so I, I am going to support both of these. Um, but for end users who are not super technical that want an easy to manage system, I'm going to go with OpenSense every time. Uh, I've not been burned with it yet, so I don't see any reason that, you know, I, I was actually uh, was talking to somebody and they said that those updates that come out so quickly is part of the reason they don't use it. But as long as the updates aren't causing problems and they're tested, I've got no problem. I'd rather be up to date um, than waiting for someone to turn around. Now, PFSense does, when there's a, a critical issue, they do get those updates out very quickly. So I'm not saying anything uh, negative about that. What I'm saying is the reasons why I use this and why I am, you know, driven to use it and and give it to my users. So I've got some OpenSense content coming, some more PFSense content. So hang in there. It is going to be a, a week or so or a week or two. I've got some grand stream videos coming out, but definitely look for this. This is going to be on deck along with some other Cisco videos. We're going to take OpenSense and PFSense and we're going to connect them to a Cisco and we're going to connect them to an edge router. So and maybe we'll connect them all together. We'll have to see how that works out. So let me know what you think about the difference in the interfaces and if you use PFSense or OpenSense down in the comments. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need IT consulting, the link is down below, willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form and we'll be in touch. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon, and thank you to those folks, that link is down below. And as always, our Amazon affiliate links and other affiliate links are down below. Don't feel pressured to use those. It's totally optional, but when you do use those, it doesn't change your price and it does kick a couple of bucks over to the channel and that is always appreciated to keep some of this gear rolling in. Once again, my name's Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.